Good afternoon, everyone. I'd like to call the meeting of the full board of the Macomb County Board of Commissioners to order. First item on the agenda is the Pledge of Allegiance. Please rise. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Item number three, roll call. Please check yourself in. Item number four, adoption of the agenda. Uh, can I have a motion to adopt the motion by Lacido, supported by Leonetti? Please vote. All right, thank you. Item number five is invocation by Commissioner Phil Kraft. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Please bow your heads. We meet to serve our community, to use our resources wisely and well, to represent all members of our community fairly, to make decisions that promote the common good. We recognize our responsibility to the past and the future and the rights and needs of both individuals and community. As trusted servants, we seek blessings on our deliberations and on our efforts here today. May we act wisely and well, amen. amen. Thank you, Commissioner. Item number six, approval of the minutes dated August 31st, 2017. Motion by Mijak, supported by Sauger. Please vote. Okay, motion approved. Item number seven, public participation. Anybody in the public wishing to speak? You have five minutes. Uh, the first public participation is related to items on the agenda only. Please come up and give us your name and address, and welcome. Thank you. My name is uh, Tom Pellerito. I live at 31984 Riverdale, Harrison Township. Uh, today I'm here to comment on the Infrastructure and Economic Development Committee recommendations, uh, specifically page 57. In the middle of the page, uh, last line item under Department of Roads Project, local proposed local projects. Uh, Party Street Bridge removal. Uh, Party Street Bridge is valuable because it provides a safe cycling and walking, walking route out of the Huron Point subdivision. If the Party Bridge is removed, my family and my neighbors are forced to use Lakeshore Drive. Lakeshore Drive has no shoulder, high traffic volumes, and many speeders. There have been discussions about making improvements to Lakeshore to accommodate pedestrians, but no decision has been made to proceed. For these reasons, the removal of the party bridge should be deferred until a safe means for cyclists and pedestrians to exit the subdivision has been created. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else from the public wishing to speak? Please come up, give us your name, give us your address, and you have five minutes, sir. Good afternoon, my name is Brian Zemke. I reside at 42177 Royal Lane in Clinton Township. Uh, I'm here today with regards to agenda item number nine, the Substance Use Disorder Oversight Policy Board appointments. I currently serve on that board and I'm here today uh, as a member of the community. I'm also on the Board of Directors for Families Against Narcotics. Um, we did have two individuals reach out um, to me personally to get more information about this board and looking to get involved. <coughs> One I know you met on Monday was Katie Donovan. She's our executive vice president. I'm sure you've seen her, heard from her. Um, she's nationally, if not internationally, respected in this matter. Uh, I believe her presentation on Monday as well as her resume speaks for herself. Uh, but with regards to the school position, um, Brandon, or he goes by Brad Cusimano, uh, he's been unable to be here. He has been in touch with me. Uh, he realizes there were, were dates he could come introduce himself and interview. He is stuck in Wyoming. Uh, for school-related business, but I wanted to briefly speak on behalf of him um, through his work at De La Salle, and it should be noted, I'm a proud Michigan State graduate. Mr. Kuzmano is a Michigan graduate, so for me to be here supporting him says a lot <laughs> as it is, but he's the assistant athletic director at De La Salle, also teaches gy uh, gym class there as well. He's well-respected in the community through his work at De La Salle. He's begun um, several new programs, among them, most importantly, perhaps, um, they have a drug testing program in place for their students that my understanding is the teachers have also taken place in as well, um, just to be fair. 
Um, because he was a varsity wrestler at the University of, Mi of Michigan, I believe he was a Big Ten champion a member of their teams. He's well respected in another important, of our, important aspect of our schools, which would be our athletic directors. Um, FAN and other organizations have put a lot of time and effort into getting into the athletes, getting into their participation nights so we can involve them, um, get them information to the parents and the players regarding the epidemic that's striking our county. I know you guys are well aware of the issue. Um, our prescription drug deaths doubled in the last year alone. So to have someone like Brad, who's well respected as an athlete, as an educator, um, advocating on behalf of the county to help uh, reverse that trend, I think would be a very beneficial asset to our board. Uh, I thank you guys for your time. Thank you, Ryan. Any other member of the public wishing to speak? Going once, twice. Public participation is closed. Um, we'll go to item number eight, correspondence from the Office of County Executive. Um, well, I guess we did get a correspondence today, a response to the request again to uh, be a part of the IFAS program to uh, be able to look into the uh, um, line items of each of the budget uh, budgets that we receive and we were denied again. I just wanted to um, uh, let everybody know that if they haven't read that. So other than that, I don't have any other correspondence. Um, so we'll move to number nine, appointments. So we have uh, the Substance Use Disorder Oversight Policy Board. There's two vacancies. Two people are going for reappointment. There are two separate categories. Um, the first category is a school district or MISD representative, and they represent the educational community. And Nancy Buell is currently on the board looking for reappointment. And Brandon Cusmano is um, uh, looking to be appointed to the board. Uh, and we just heard about uh, him just a minute ago. So uh, being that we have this uh, form of uh, voting, I would look for somebody to make a motion to appoint one or the other, and we could uh, move forward with that, and then we could uh, see if they don't get the votes, then we could ask for a motion to appoint the other one. So Commissioner Sager, do you have a, a motion? We have a motion to appoint uh, both gentlemen. Oh, hold on. Because there's only two openings. No, uh, I'm sorry. The first uh, category, Marv, uh, there, there's the recovery community is one opening and the school district is one opening. So either Nancy or Brandon, we have to pick one of those two. So that's the first one. So if, does anybody have a motion to either appoint Brandon Cusmano or Nancy Buell? Commissioner Kraft. Mr. Chair, I'd like to make a motion to appoint Nancy Buell. Support. Okay, support, uh, made, motion made by Kraft, support by Commissioner Romano. So uh, any, any comments on this? Otherwise, we can vote on it. And if um, obviously, if Ms. Uh, Buell gets enough votes, then that will be the end of it. Any comments? All right. Well, then uh, we're ready to vote. A yes would obviously be for Nancy Buell. Okay, the motion passes 11 to two. So for the category one, Nancy Buell is going to be reappointed to the uh, MIS, as an MISD representative. Um, so then we'll go to the recovery community uh, appointee. So I'd like to take a motion from the floor. Well, uh, is this, okay, for one or the other. So Commissioner Lucido, do you have a motion? All right, we have a motion for Katie Donovan to be appointed. And we had a support originally, originally by Jim Care or by Commissioner Carabelli. And uh, any comments uh, or questions, Commissioner Duje? I'll uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, who's the uh, who's on there now? Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, so Ellen Monroe is uh, the one. Uh, I'm sorry, I should have said that. Being reappointed, uh, if we if we voted for her, she would be reappointed. Uh, Katie Donovan uh, would be a new appointment. Both of those uh, ladies were here the other day right. and they both uh, had a chance to speak in front of our board. Katie Donovan was the first speaker, Ellen Monroe was the second. Thank you, Mr. Chair. You're welcome, any other comments? Okay, please uh, vote on your iPads and this would be a vote for Katie Donovan. Okay, the motion passes, and I'm just not sure how it passed number-wise yet. <laughs> we're, wait, we're waiting for one yes or no. There we go, okay. 
The motion passes nine to four, so Katie Donovan will actually be appointed to the uh, Substance Use Disorder Oversight Board. Uh, thank you very much, commissioners. Um, we'll move on to item number 10. Uh, so item number 10 is the uh, resolution urging the Detroit Veterans Hospital to improve services. Need a motion to adopt that resolution. Moved by Commissioner Duge, supported by Commissioner Kraft. Please vote. Or is any comments on there? I'm sorry, hold on one second. I know that there's a comment on this. Commissioner Sauger. I know we're gonna send this resolution to the VA hospital, which maybe it needs it because of various department heads, but I have been to the VA many a times. I'm going Monday again, and the departments that I go to are just class A. So not every department is crucified for their services down there. Maybe some are, I wish we knew which ones, but I'd like to say a word that the ones that I use are class A, and I appreciate going down there. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Sager, point taken. Uh, any other comments on this? If not, please vote. Okay. What am I doing? Yeah, okay. Okay, motion passes. Uh, or number 11, uh, item number 11, ordinance uh, to for the July and September year-end funds continuing appropriations ordinance. I need a motion to adopt that. Moved by Commissioner Brown, supported by Commissioner Lucido. Any comments? If not, please vote. Commissioner Brown. Item passes, uh, let's see, 12 to one. Commissioner Carabelli voting no. Item number 12, finance committee recommendations. Uh, would we like to take these in their entirety at all? At all or? Okay, moved by Brown, supported by Duje to take these in their in, in in their entirety, um, moving forward, all existing votes, positive or negative, or in the abstention. Mr. Chair? Uh, yes, Commissioner Kraft. I'd like to ask that 12A be removed. You mean be set aside and we talk be specifically on yes. that? Yes. Um, I, I don't have, would you mind uh, changing your uh, motion, Commissioner Brown, to just uh, include B through E, 12B through E, in their entirety? And yes, yes. Uh, Commissioner Duje, would you mind uh, agreeing to that? Thank you. All right, so the amended motion is uh, to take item number 12, B through C in their entirety while carrying forth all the original votes. Please vote. Nope. All right, motion passes. So item 12A, um, I'm not sure exactly. Um, so we have a motion to approve, there we go, motion to approve the hiring of the external auditing firm um, supported by Commissioner Carabelli, uh, or made by Commissioner Carabelli, supported by Commissioner Duje. So let's vote on that. I think someone wanted to change their vote. That's why we're going through this. So please vote on whether you'd like to hire Plant Moran or not. Item passes 10 to three with no votes coming from Commissioner Myjack, Kraft, and Drolette. Thank you. Item 13, proclamation commending Ryan Weiberg for achieving status of Eagle Scouts and proclaiming September 11th through 17th, 2017 as Patriot Week and September 17th as Constitution Day and moved to in their entirety by Commissioner Drolette, supported by Commissioner Kraft. Any discussion on these? Please vote. Would you like to, okay. Otherwise. All right, motion passes unanimously. Mm -hmm. Item 14, new business. Any commissioners with new business? Um, since I don't have the help, where are we on here? Where am I getting oh, to blue it? button. Thank you. Okay, well, no speakers at this point, anybody? Oh, I don't, oh, there we go. Car Commissioner Carabelli popped up here first. 
No, I have for Commissioner, <laughs> Commissioner Kirabelli. I'm gonna I'm gonna go in order here. I'm gonna go in order. Yes. I wanted to uh, let the board members know and anybody in the public that uh, they had the first of uh, two meetings today, CENCOG, the uh, 2045 Regional Transportation Plan public input. There's another meeting here in the boardroom at 6 p.m. this evening. Uh, today we had uh, Com Chair Bob Smith, we had Commissioner Kraft, and um, we had Commissioner Leonetti uh, in attendance this morning. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Carabelli. Oops, Commissioner Kraft. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, Macomb Community Mental Health had our meeting, first meeting here last night, and we received a lot of compliments on it of the room. The staff did a great job helping us get through the meeting, and uh, they just wanted to say thank you to the board and to the staff for, for using the room and all the assistance provided. Thank you, Mr. Chair. All right, thank you, Commissioner Kraft. Anybody else? If not, I have one item of new business. Uh, another re correspondence that came back to us uh, regarding, uh, well, we offered um, this room for CMH for their convenience and for them to be a part of board sync which they seem to uh, really like uh, along with most of the other departments and uh, boards that have uh, tried this I do want to mention that uh, our request for uh, the use for the ethics board to use board sync came back um, in the uh, negative uh, the uh, Dr. Ambroyer said they were not interested in using board sync even though they originally were interested in it and we went through some time and pains uh, with our staff setting this up for them and all of a sudden we uh, that was uh, uh, that request was denied from them so they do not want to use board sync we are still going to investigate this and uh, try to convince them further about the transparency and the use uh, the ease of use of this uh, system but just so you know that was uh, brought back to us today. So seeing no one else new on new business, um, we'll go to public participation, item number 15. Any members of the public wishing to speak? Please come up to the microphone. You have five minutes. Give us your name and address and uh, welcome. Hi, my name is Kylie Loy Simmons. I live at 404 East Woodward Heights Boulevard, Hazel Park, Michigan. I have some packets for you guys. Am I allowed to hand them to somebody? You guys um, can can you Maybe, uh, Sergeant, will you grab those, please? Thanks. Okay, why don't you go pass them out? Okay, now. Sometime within the last year, I met Keith Olson by watching some videos he had posted to YouTube and Facebook, social media, such. I was kind of watching it, looked at more and more, and he kept posting more and more, and it really truly concerned me. I may live in Oakland County, but I am a Macomb County business owner, and uh, I've seen a lot of evidence that says that he should you know, not even be in the position he's in right now. In fact, a lot of it's enclosed in the stuff that I've given you. Keith Olson. My name? Or no. The person? Keith Olson. He's standing behind me, and he's also got a picture, a mugshot, saying he's not allowed in this building in the, fa in the floor downstairs. So, I mean, he's here to speak publicly. I hope that's not going to be a problem. That's a freedom of speech, too. So, all right. Well, anyway, I just want to say, I, you know, he's been through county after county after county, and this stuff has been dismissed. And now it's in your guys' county, and I watched him increase a bond after, you know, he offered to do whatever he needed to do from another state in which he was allowed to be in. They extradited him over a $1,000 bond from Arkansas. I mean, this is just a waste of taxpayers' money on top of everything else. Um, but there's false police reports that have been filed by clerks at the courthouse at 41B. And I, I, I think this really needs to be addressed because it's really kind of something else that I've, what I'm watching him go through. And I don't think he deserves it. So I, I really think that everybody in here needs to be a lot more involved in what kind of stuff is going on in our counties. I mean, this is like the fifth or sixth person. I've seen tons and tons of evidence and they just keep stringing them along and it's really disturbing that you're wasting our taxpayers' money. I mean, prosecuting the same person over and over and over again for the same stuff. And he's got three dismissals. It's just, it's something really needs to be watched and it's, they've moved it now to Sterling Heights. So I really want everybody to kind of pay attention to what he has to say. It's very important to me. Thank you. Thank you. Sir, please give us your name and address. I'm Keith Olson. P.O. Box 1083, Royal Oak, Michigan, 48068. Uh, I run CRAP, Criminalized Racketeering Against Patients, my nonprofit. I'm here today 
to bring this board up to speed on my police misconduct lawsuit and color law kidnapping. The Kellington Township net team has been stalking me since 2012. April 2012, the net team forged commercial papers, licenses, and business contracts to entrap me. Now Clinton Township City Council is holding town hall meetings to promote their medical marijuana dispensary licensing scheme. Clinton Township should not be allowed to promote any cannabis businesses until after corruption cases like mine and Dean Reynolds are over with and closed. Uh, 2012, Net team leader David DeMick supervised Officer Gilbert, Blasky, and Dunn while they forged commercial papers, recommendations, doctor's recommendations, uh, business licenses, cars. Sir, I I'm going to have to ask you this. On this board, first of all, you're talking about Clinton Township right now, but you're giving specific names and you're basically – uh, it's basically a slander against them. We don't know if it's true or not, but I on have this public board, record proof okay, with me. On this board, when you come up and you want to attack uh, anybody on this board, we have it as a generalized thing that you can talk in general terms, but you can't. We're not here to pick out individual officers or anybody. I mean, we got your paperwork. Can you give us a story without? I'd be happy to leave out the names. Thank if you. Like, yes, thanks. Uh, Another point of information, Mr. Chair, didn't the prior speaker say that there was an order excluding this gentleman from being in the building? There is no order. As a matter of fact, I've been through this for the last year and a half since the Clinton Township police officers lied to me and have been telling me that I'm not allowed in the building. I've been here 16 times since. I joke around with the guys at the front. I post videos of me online joking around with the officers in the front saying, no, that's nothing, don't worry about it. I've uh, FOIA'd and I'm working now in subpoenaing any records to see who would have put that up there. I mean, you can't just put a picture of Keith Olson's not allowed in a public building without somebody signing off on it, without somebody bringing it up. I mean, it's, for one, it's not even legal. You know, if they put a PPO out on me or something, that would make sense, but just to. Sir, at this point, you, you, I mean, we have security down there for a reason, and I'm not exactly sure if what she said was true or not, but, I mean, they, she did get through security, and our, our corporation council is sitting right here. Yes, sir. He, so if you continue, I mean, you have a couple minutes left, please. All right. Did this take away from my time? Uh, we, can, uh, we, we can adjust that a little bit, but if All you right, would great. please carry on. Yeah, because my speech, I did time in exactly five minutes. Uh, all right. The men premeditated a plan to entrap me. They forged a bunch of papers, met with me and called me, and then uh, when the time came, they tore up the stuff. So the stuff wasn't even available. It took me five years to get the evidence on the back end. You know, at the time they busted me, their forged fake cards amounted for 2% of the cards issued in Macomb County. Um, skip a couple names here. Uh, the prosecutor's team created a Brady violation in baby killer Ronnie DeMambro's case by withholding evidence, specifically photographs. An obvious Brady violation. Uh, Smith withheld exculpatory evidence in DeMambro's case, just like my case. Uh, DeMambro's murder conviction is now reversed in appeals court. Now, shortly after DeMambro's conviction, I e emailed Clinton Township some FOIA requests. The requests produced audio surveillance tapes proving my innocence. And the fact that the net team forged and presented forged commercial documents to me. Um, they're still withholding evidence. Um, after uh, the DeMambro's Brady violation, I contacted the prosecutor's office to complain about the horrible mistake and talk to Josh Van Lan. I asked him why a baby killer gets two trials and yet no medical marijuana patient in this county has. He agreed there's no factual basis for my conviction whatsoever and promised to open up for me. Uh, the prosecutor completely changed his tune and threatened me with arrest for complaining weeks later after I asked him to hold up to his word. Um, I do not know, but someone in the prosecutor's office posted a picture of me in this public building with a note that said, not allowed in building. It's still down there today. I've foiled the city, the county, the state, everyone for info on the wanted poster, and they all say it doesn't exist, but it's downstairs today. This is color law abuse, kidnapping, and now they are even denying my right to access the courts. Um, my argument against these guys is so good it's gotten at least one judge's attention in Macomb County. September 25th at 8.30 a.m., I have oral arguments 
reopening my 2012 case to uh, get some preliminary hearings, subpoena and all the evidence, and hopefully put these guys off the streets for good. Now, shortly after submitting these court papers last month to make that action happen, the Clinton Township Police fabricated yet another crime against me. The only problem, I wasn't even in Michigan when they claim. Uh, they recruited the Gross Point Woods Police to also put another phony charge on me. And the prosecutor laughed at them, called them liars, dismissed the case. It's in the packet, all the information. So you have about 40 seconds left, right. including the minute I gave you extra. Birchbeck accepted my evidence and dismissed the case, but Clinton Township won't. So I'm going to court for that. I'm here today to let everyone in this community know that I'm not afraid of these maniacs, and I'm not afraid of anything. I'm not leaving Michigan again until my name is clear and these police are in court and hopefully in prison. I have a moral objection to giving corrupt politicians money because they'll just use that money to hurt somebody else. I'll fight for this case the rest of my life with no consideration for myself, my property, or the fact that I'm facing 40 years in prison on a lie. Um, I'll, let me two more sentences and I'll be done. All right, the Clinton Township must be stopped from constructing a criminal code that allows for police to yank children out of the cars by their ankles while they sanction Main Street uh, brick and mortar marijuana dispensaries to our kids. You know, it's too late for me and my family because, I, you know, Keith Olson died April 9th, 2012 in that militarized raid, but there's still plenty of time for everybody else's family. I do appreciate your time and the attention. If you have any questions, I'd be happy to talk about it. Thank you, sir. My email is Keith L. Olson, K-E-I-T-H-L-O-L-S-O-N, at Gmail, and I would appreciate a dialogue. I do need some help. I'm in a horrible position. Thank you. Thank you. Any other members from the public wishing to speak? Any other members of the public wishing to speak? Seeing none, close public participation. Roll call. I need a motion to adjourn by Commissioner Duge, supported by Commissioner Drolette. We'll have a... All right. Meeting adjourned. Everybody have a good week, weekend.